check out this free video and make sure you hit like and subscribe. Uh, there was an interview with Steve Austin uh, with the Adrian Hernandez podcast where Steve Austin talked about, uh, confirmed at least, all of the reports and rumors that were out there about him being close to appearing at WrestleMania 40. It obviously didn't happen. The Undertaker filled his position alongside John Cena in making appearances to try to uh, fend off the bloodline during Cody Rhodes's match. But Austin hopes to be at WrestleMania 41. There was a part of me that wants to read off the front page and do my best Stone Cold Steve Austin impression. I'm not going to do that. But considering that he's got a ranch located in Nevada, Allegiant Stadium isn't far away, and the biggest star on that show is going to be The Rock, is number one generational rival aren't we going to have to see stone cold steve austin be involved in wrestlemania 41 and would you be disappointed if he wasn't i would uh, mike where was wrestlemania this past year do you remember it was in it was tamp where the hell was it i can't even remember now i didn't go was it sofi stadium was it in la Hmm. Because I, you know what? I, I don't honestly be, don't even remember. I believe oh, we're Sto I believe we're Stone Cold, old Stone Cold Steve Austin lives is like it's not that close. Oh, Philadelphia, duh. That's what it was. It was Philadelphia. Oh uh, yeah. I guess Liberty it is a lot Bell closer nonsense. to Philadelphia, but you know, it's not that close. It's an eight hour drive, which I guess if you're you know, he can make it to the other coast quicker on an airplane, but I guess we'll see him. Who cares? I want to see him. I mean, look. Yeah, I, sure, I, I do. Boston. I mean, if I have a choice of seeing Stone Cold or not on WrestleMania, I'll take it. Now, but okay. I'm not going to lose sleep over him being there or not. I'll Here's make up thing. in my mind this long-standing feud between Rock and Undertaker again if I have to. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see The Rock or Undertaker, and I need to see The Rock out of there really quickly after WrestleMania. So how better to do that than with Steve Austin? But can you take both of them if you also have to have Paul Levesque at some point coming out there being all Triple H-y. I think he's past that. I, I think so. Nah. Nick Khan out there? No, nah, never mind. That wouldn't happen. The Wrath of Khan. The Wrath of Khan. The Kagan of Khans to be crowned. Bobby Lashley has been moved to the alumni page of WWE.com. And that's notable because that means all the reports of him not being re-signed and or leaving WWE were true. And that leads to this question, Filthy. If you are Blaster Lashley, do you try to take the safe big money in AEW, which will tie you up for at least two years? Or do you go the path of pulling a Brock Lesnar, go to Japan because... To me, he's got some leverage, and there's not like there's a ton of stars over there. Or do you just hook up with MVP and Omas and do some barnstorming, do some GCW, some blood sport, and take big money and then just keep it moving? What would you do in this situation with him, if you were him? Where money is no issue and you can do what you want. If I were Bobby Lashley, I would just lift weights in Colorado or wherever he's hanging out. Just and just have fun with Crystal for the rest of his life. I mean, he's had an MMA career. He's had a pro wrestling career. I don't know what else he he, he he certainly doesn't need to accomplish anything else. I can say that whether he wants to accomplish more things, obviously it seems like he does. Yeah, uh, it seemed like he had unfinished business in his mind in WWE. You know, AEW is the other the other show in town. Uh, but I don't really know where he would fit in there. I don't really see it, I guess. Uh, he could go to Japan. Sure, any promotion there would be dying to have Bobby Lashley on their roster or making, you know, appearances for them. Uh, if he were going to do that, though, probably the option that would pay the most, and we talked about this off the air, would be Risen taking an MMA fight. You know, obviously he was a, a fighter in the past for Bellator. Uh, so we could see him, you know, getting back in the cage, maybe where the competition over in Japan for the heavier fighters is not as competitive. It's not as good 
as it is around the rest of the world. So that, besides retirement, would be my choice if I were old Blaster Lashley. So you really think it's time to just pack it on up, drive back to Colorado, be with the, the beautiful wife, and and just live a beautiful life for for till the end here? You know, you, you would fight the urge to want to take some of that big AEW money or have some fun there, throwing around Josh Barnett in Japan during a blood sport show. Yeah, I just told you what I would do. He can go <laughs> throw around Bobby Oligan in Risen for some money. You know, would you that fight would, that it? Would Look, if choice. you were him, is there any amount of money? Is there any amount of money in the world at this point in his life where he could be? Forget about a worked fight, but an actual MMA fight because I'm sure somebody would offer it. That's what I'm talking about. I know that, but <laughs> Christ. But still, I mean, like, legitimately, though, if you're him, honestly, can you picture that? Yeah, I hmm. think so. He's he's defied. I guess. F- you know, physics. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Defied age, physics, everything. And if he was into such wisdom. a thing, and granted, he is a natural, you know, physical wonder and everything, but it's not like also in Japan if he did need to, to you know, take some extra vitamins. Not like they ever cared about any of that. It was just making sure you showed up and were upright, even if that was, you know, barely the case in some cases. But we'll move away from that, get to everyone's favorite, television ratings. Numbers are in for this past Wednesday night's AEW on TBS. And with the Olympics over with, the rating came back up to over 700,000, 703,000 people on average, up from 622,000 last week. The number was helped dramatically by regaining people 18 to 34. And last Friday, I think I said 50%. It was a 100% drop that they had had from the week before in males 18 to 34. Whatever had them for that week, they all came back this week, about 88% of them. So the number came back up. 18 to 49-year-old demo, a point two three or 305,000 people. AEW Rampage is tonight on TNT. Matches taped Wednesday in Norfolk. No spoilers here. The conglomeration, Mark Briscoe, Orange Cassidy, and Tomohiro Ishii against the Outrunners and the Butcher. Nyla Rose against Erica Lee. Nick Wayne against Kip Sabian, Kyle Fletcher and Roosh against KM. I guess it, who, who would that be? Uh, Kyle Kevin Matthews. Matthews. And, Kevin Matthews, I'm sorry. And Rhett Titus. Oh, t- Rhett Titus still out there grinding away. I love it. And Top Flight, who have Action Andretti and my new favorite character, Stewardess Layla Gray, in their corner against the M&M connection, uh, collection excuse me, of Mansoor and Mason Madden. Are you excited for this, Filthy? Or will you be one of the 298,000 people who tune in tonight? The AEW card po- looks pretty easy to predict, <laughs> I'll say. What, what if they added Mina Shirakawa late? You know what? If they, if they I, Mike, I mean, I told you earlier, I talked about it. I'm going to be watching the Craig Jones Invitational at that time. So if they threw out... If they had Mackenzie Dern take on Fionn Davies or Craig Jones take on Gabby Garcia live on Rampage, I'd be tuning in. But as sad Gabby as it Garcia. is, as sad as sad as it is, the the highest paying professional wrestling competition of the weekend won't even get covered. So, but that's what I'll be watching. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.